Hi everyone, my name is Kayla and I'm an education officer at the Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary. Um, this week we are going to be talking all about different types of animal body coverings and exploring the ways that those body coverings can help that animal to survive, whether it's through camouflage or helping them move or helping to protect them. The type of things that an animal is covered with are really, really important and can tell you a lot about the animal. So um, animal body coverings can be spiky or smooth, bumpy, lumpy, soft, slimy, all sorts of different amazing textures. The first body covering that we're going to be looking at today is actually one that we have. So everyone, um, pop out your arms and your hands and have a really close look at our skin. Skin is so important to us. It covers us from head to toe, keeps all of our insides in. Um, it can come in different beautiful shades and colors. So I'm looking closely at my skin. I've got lots of little freckles. You might have some freckles too. So our skin is, is super duper important. And lots of animals have different types of skin that's quite different from our own. So I've got a bit of a challenge for you. I'm gonna show you a couple of really close up pictures of different animal skin. And I want you to see if you can figure out what the mystery animal is just by looking at the picture. So, uh, mystery skin number one. Mm. Now this animal skin might be a little hard to tell from the picture, but it is gray in color and it's very, very wrinkly. And you can't tell this from the picture, but I know that this animal has very thick, tough, protective skin. This animal can be found in habitats that get very hot and sometimes very dry. So uh, this animal spends a lot of time out in the sun and their skin helps to protect them. Anyone have a guess? All right. The mystery animal is an elephant. If you said elephant, give yourself a pat on the back or a high five. Good job. All right. Oh, another cool thing that elephants can do to protect their skin is for even extra sun protection, they can scoop up dirt with their trunks and fling it over onto their back, just like sunscreen. Pretty cool. All right, mystery skin number two. This animal has a very different skin from the elephant. It's not wrinkly at all. It's very, very smooth. Uh, it helps this animal to glide through the water. This is a, a waterproof, rubbery skin. And if you look really closely, this animal even has some barnacles growing on its skin. So this must be a very big animal that might live a very long time to have barnacles growing on its skin. All right. Have a bit of a think about it. In three, two, one, a humpback whale. Look, if you said whale, give yourself a pat on the back. If you said humpback whale, double pats on the back. Great job. So uh, a whale is actually a mammal just like us. And when they're born, they actually have a little bit of hair as well. Did you know that whales have whiskers on their chin and dolphins as well? But it falls out but their body is covered in smooth, rubbery skin. All right. Ooh, this is a really cool one. Possibly my favorite. Sometimes animals' skin can act as a warning to predators or a warning to other animals, especially if it has lots of bright colors. So this animal's skin is covered in bright circles bright blue circles. And if a predator sees that, it'll see those bright colors and say, ooh, I might stay away from that animal. It might be a bit dangerous. Um, it's also a very soft, flexible skin. This animal does a lot of moving around. It can squeeze into really tight little spaces and hide. Ready? Three, 
two, one. It is an octopus, a blue ringed octopus, which is a very dangerous, poisonous animal. Pretty cool, huh? If you said octopus, give yourselves eight pats on the back, one for each of an octopus's legs, or even eight high fives. All right, our last mystery skin of the day is a really, really cool one. Um, this particular one that I'm showing you is green, but this animal can have lots of different colors. Sometimes this animal's skin can be bright colors like blue or yellow or red if it is a poisonous animal. Uh, this is a green one, and you can't really tell from the picture, but this skin is wet and slimy. This skin has to stay wet. If this animal gets too dry, uh, it can make them a bit unwell, a bit sick. So they've got to stay nice and wet and they live in habitats that are very moist. Uh, it's also a, a bit of a stretchy skin. It's a very delicate skin. So this is an animal that um, we don't want to, to touch with our, our dry hands. Could be a bit dangerous for them. And I think you might have a guess. All right, three, two, one. If you said, frog, give yourself a pat on the back. This one in particular is a beautiful little green tree frog. And we are actually going to meet a green tree frog next time we chat. Hi guys, we've been talking about different types of animal skin and how their skin helps them to survive. I reckon one of the animals with the coolest types of skin has to be amphibians. Just like this white-lipped tree frog you can see here. White-lipped tree frogs can grow to be the largest tree frogs in the world. And their skin is really important. It can help them to camouflage. Just look at how well this frog is blending into the log that he's sitting on. Really, really cool. Now, frog skin is different than our skin it has to stay moist. If you feel your skin, it's quite dry, but a frog's skin will be wet and slimy. And they can actually do two cool things with their skin that we can't do. They can breathe air and drink water right through their skin. That's one of the reasons that we don't touch frogs too much, especially if we've got dry hands or any um, mosquito repellent or sunscreen. They're very, very sensitive because anything that gets on their skin can pass right through into their bodies and could actually make them a bit sick. Now something that I think is really cool and kind of weird about frog skin is that they actually shed their skin quite frequently. They shed off a, a see-through clear layer of skin and they actually pull it forward from the back of their body and they pull it into their mouth all in one piece and they eat it. I'm pretty glad we don't do that. 